Hello, I'm Pierre Abis of Union Bank. Diversity is one of our most closely held values. That's why we're proud to honor local heroes in celebration of Latino Heritage Month. Now, let's meet one of our honorees. My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am President and CEO of the Center for Training and Career, CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. Now we have our own facility, and so it enables us to expand programs in response to the needs of the community. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. This moment has been made possible by Union Bank in partnership with KQED. Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwafili Rose Amador. And together we are Native Voice TV. We are the indigenous people. Well, I had a wonderful weekend. And how wonderful was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, a good friend, Dr. Daryl Babe Wilson, came in from Carson City, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And he is an author. He wrote uh, this book, The Morning the Sun Went Down. Oh. And I don't know if you've had a chance to read it yet, but no, it's a wonderful yet. book. And um, he's in the process of writing his uh, second novel, mm -hmm. and he's just waiting for a publisher, and hopefully he'll get one, because um, a lot of uh, publishers don't understand, you know, native thought. And this is a picture of him here. He, um, he was here with his two sons for uh, Saturday and Sunday. You mm -hmm. got to see him, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's a... Yeah, one of the, the dilemmas he was having with his publishing is um, a lot of the native writing is in a typical way where they, they, they go off the dreams, mm -hmm. the dreams that they have, and that motivates them and, and gives them inspiration for their, for their books and everything else, their thoughts and everything like that. But um, some of the publishers were having problems with that. And it was too many dreams or something no, like that. No, they were saying that he was going from dreams to stories and memories and and it was going back and forth, well, life does, yeah. <laughs> you know, so he was trying to explain that, but he's uh, almost finished with that book, and hopefully he'll get a publisher, but um, he's a great author, oh, yeah. and you know, great he had, man. He's got some good man. stories, yeah, I know you and uh, uh, 
Um, now we had some, some, some more time with him, listen mm -hmm. to the stories and stuff like that. You know, one of the things he did say was, he does speak his language, mm -hmm. and I'll probably say it wrong. Um, he is of the East Ati, which is incorrectly called the Pitt River Tribe. But um, he was saying there's very few people Mm -hmm. left. I think he said there were two, only two people left that um, speak his language. Yeah. And um, that was of, you know, of course, serious concern because, you know, how many of the kids are learning the language, how will it be preserved, oh, and how yeah. will they pass it on, you know, and not be lost like it is with many tribes. Yeah, once it's gone, it's gone forever, you know. You no, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. In fact, we have a guest today. Okay. That'll tell Make you a me a liar. Different. <laughs> And welcome. Would you please introduce yourself to our audience? Um, hi, my name is um, Karina Luna. Welcome. And welcome. What tribe are you with? I'm with the Amamutsu tribes. Amamutsu. Mm -hmm. And you found with your tribe, you also had that dilemma of not having the language preserved or not having any uh, speakers. Yeah, um, our language, um, our last fluent speaker passed away around 1930. Um, her name was Ascension Solorzano, and she was the last fluent speaker. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fortunately for us, um, there has been a lot of documentation. Um, there was a linguist, um, J.P. Harrington, who worked for the Smithsonian Institute, who um, came down and interviewed her um, for a couple of years, and actually we must have about 35,000 pages of field notes of uh, various, you know, language information as well as cultural mm -hmm. traditions and, and, and so forth. Now the language that you have, is it on uh, audio or is it uh, written down? We have some audio tapes. It's uh -huh. mainly um, songs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, other than that, it's just, it's, it's all field notes. It's wow. everything, yeah. So you have, you, are you typically having problems with the translation or, or the correct way of saying certain things? Um, I, I'm actually in a program with, it's called, the, the name of the organization is called ICLES. Mm -hmm. and I believe the acronym is something like um, uh, Advocates for California Indigenous Language Survival. Mm -hmm. And they actually created programs for California Indians um, to preserve and to revitalize our languages. Mm -hmm. So um, with their help, um, I've gone to various workshops and conferences, and there's this one workshop that they have. It's called the Breath of Life Silent No More Workshop. And it's a workshop mainly for Native people, California Indians, who have you know one or two speakers left, or or uh, most of the time it's there's no speakers. Mm -hmm. um, they give you a crash course in linguistics, and they usually team you up with a student, a linguistic student, or um, a linguist there at, at the university, um, which is in UCB, UC, um, University of, of Berkeley. Um, and uh, with their help, uh, we've been able to you know translate certain things. We have a dictionary, um, textbooks. Um, we got lucky the person, the linguist that um, was teamed up with us, her name was Natasha Warner, and she was a grad student um, at Berkeley at the time. And now she's actually, um, I believe, assistant professor um, for the uh, University of Arizona. And w she still works together with us. We actually got a grant from NEH. Um, I think we were granted something like $165,000 wow. um, in order to go through the 35,000 pages of field notes and wow. um, to, yeah, to a lot of expand notes. our dictionary mm -hmm. and textbook and so forth. And actually, um, we, every penny that we asked for from NEH, we actually got funded for, which I heard That's is almost wonderful. unheard of. Now, what is one of the processes that you're trying to bring back the language and teach your children and, and everyone else? Well, it's, it's really difficult when you don't have um, somebody to, to speak with or, or mm -hmm. to hear from. So we're really strictly relying on these field notes and, mm -hmm. um, and learning how each you know, linguist um, wrote things down so we know you know a is ah sound and we know mm -hmm. it's always ah every time we see it so it's just you know learning his his orthography his his system mm -hmm. and um, being able to to go from there which um there's it wasn't just jp harrington but there's a couple of other um you know linguists or yeah. other people that studied and wrote down our language and so what we've done is that we've compiled all sources and created our own orthography because mm -hmm. you know everything as we know was all orth oral tradition so um, w you know we're able to create our own alphabet you know as you might say yeah. so and how um, long have you been working on the language school oh gosh um, 
Well, I've been learning the language, it's maybe around eight or nine years now, possibly, so yeah. And how many students are going through the classes? Oh, um, well actually we have, we started a nonprofit organization, um, me and one of my cousins, around 2000, and it's called the Mutsu Language Foundation, and it's a nonprofit um, to teach our language and revitalize our language and culture. Um, with that, we've also created um, a language committee, which um, we make decisions on how our language is structured as mm -hmm. far as like creating new words because, you know, there was no microwave back then. So we have to decide how we're going to say this or telephone and different mm -hmm. things. So we've created a committee of eight different women who, um, you know, who, who, who make these decisions. And we try to base our decisions on research, you know, d that shows, okay, you know, this is kind of how the language was used. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that we're, you know, we're trying not to butcher it. We're trying to be as traditional as, as, as possible as far as that. Now, now, most native language is kind of like an analogy type of thing. Are you kind of like, when you're creating these new words, are you kind of making it like an analogy or something? Yeah, like? Yeah, we're trying to follow the same structure. Try to, definitely, okay, definitely, yeah. We, we, you know, there's, there's different things that, that, that we can tell by the grammar, mm -hmm. you know, how things were, were structured, how we name things. You know, yeah. sometimes it's like we have... This, you know, it's for magpie, it's called arch arch, mm -hmm. which is kind of like the sound of the burr, mm -hmm. you know, or kakari, you know, which is, you know, raven, it's, it's the noise that it makes. So, you know, there's names, you know, so, so if there's animals or different things that, you know, that we don't have words for, those are, you know, things that we can use to, to create, you know, other words. Now, do some of your, like, one word means one thing and another word means another thing, but when you combine them together, it means totally something else different. Do you have something like that, or is it mm, typically what it means, I've, what it says it means? Yeah, well, it's, okay. it is what it says. And some, you know, a lot yeah. of the times, you know, we might have a word in Mutsun that might mean many things, mm -hmm. and, and it might take you a sentence or two to explain it in English. So we have words that you just really can't translate yeah. in English. When we opened the show, you'd said something in your language. What mm -hmm. did you say? I just said, hello, my name is Karina Luna. Okay, now, do people of all ages come to your classes, or how young do you start the children mm -hmm. in learning the language? Um, actually, what we've started, we just, right now, we just do workshops. So okay. um, we might have, you know, a quarterly workshop, or we've been kind of lagging lately, but um, yeah, we, we usually try to have workshops as in, in different areas because our people aren't, we don't have a reservation. We weren't based in a particular place. So we're kind of scattered here and there. Um, so we've gone to different places and, and had different workshops. So, I mean, it ranged anywhere from, you know, 2 to 82. So um, mm -hmm. we just work with everybody. And the way we teach isn't um, just, like, sit down with a book and try to learn that way. Um, it's, we, we play games. We play, like, Mutsun Bingo. We have, we translated Hokey Pokey into the language. <laughs> um, what was really fun is that we learned um, to count. Our, our language to count is, is very long once you get past 10. Mm -hmm. um, so like to say 11, it's um, like 10 is Don Sakte. 11 is Don Sakte Hemechak Ichos. And then it just, the words just get longer and longer. Um, wow. and what it means, it just means 10, 1, it comes out. Mm -hmm. And then that's just how that the language was used. I so it's, million. yeah, it's <laughs> really, it's, it, in the beginning, it's very frustrating and stuff when these words become really long and you have mm -hmm. to really think about how it's structured in order to, you know, say 22. You know, it's, it's difficult. So um, we made a game. It's blackjack. We call it plockjack. Mm -hmm. And we play blackjack and, and, you know, all the girls that play were, were fluent in our numbers, you know, even our linguists were amazed about how quickly we learned because they didn't, we learned faster than they did by playing this game. Now, is it all oral or is some of it written so you can actually read the words? We try to do uh, mostly, most, mostly oral when we do our workshops. Mm -hmm. um, between the language committee and stuff, it's more book, book yeah. learned. That's probably the worst way to learn a language, mm -hmm. but we have no choice. That, you have that's to do it all we have. Write it down phonetically. Yeah, we've created our own orthography. So we have okay. our own alphabet and stuff. So the way we did it is one word, you know, one, I'm sorry, excuse me, one letter, one um, sound. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one sound, one symbol. So we know every time we see that S, we know it's always, and it's, it's never going to change, or, you mm -hmm. know, different, mm -hmm. it's, or a U is always O, it's never going to change. Not like so the English language. Not like the English language, yeah. yeah. And do you have conversations that where you practice? Um, we've had some, like, set conversations where we sat down and tried to, you know, go, go back and forth mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But really, to, to learn a language, it, it has to all be oral, and it's, it's really difficult mm -hmm. when 
you just you don't have those speakers so mm -hmm. I, I guess mostly like my focus right now in my home is is for myself to become as you know semi-fluent or fluent as possible and I can you know in, in that case then I can get somebody else and just speak to them and, and teach them that way because that's really the only way to learn a language I mean you could read a book and do all these textbooks and stuff and it's it's not going to soak in I mean right. a good example is I took Spanish for four years mm -hmm. and I can probably count to ten and say hi how are you and yeah you know, if Turn you don't use it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't soak in. So yeah. definitely it's, it has to be done orally. Now, how close are you to becoming fluent? Oh, gosh. I'm, I can look things up and I can construct sentences and stuff, but to say that I can, like, spit things out from mm -hmm. my head, it's really difficult for me. I visualize everything, so mm -hmm. that makes it harder for me. Um, to be able to learn quicker. If, uh, it's not just by sound. I, when I speak it, I see the words in my head. So it, it comes a lot slower than, than yeah. I have. Well, that's hope. how all Native people learn. I'm, I mean, all of, our, all of our writings are actually pictures, you know, mm -hmm. all the Aztecs, the Mayans, you know, all the Indians here mm -hmm. were, were all by pictures. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I'm hoping it, 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 it's possible. We yeah. have enough information and. I'm hoping at some point, I just got to kind of, you know, yeah. give myself that little push to kind of, you know, take that next step and just get it done because it, it can be done. There's, oh, yeah. you know, we have enough information and we've, it's been analyzed and, mm -hmm. and, and it can definitely, it can definitely be done. Yeah, maybe your kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. Can you tell us about your tribe? Um, our tribe is from, um, well, our people were from the Pajaro River Basin near Watsonville, San Juan, you know, Gilroy, that area. Mm -hmm. um, our people were taken to Mission San Juan Batista and the surrounding missions, but mostly Mission San Juan Batista. Mm -hmm. So our people have been here for, you know, thousands of years and um, like everybody lived off the land and, and that kind of thing. Um, our tribe is politically organized, and that's where we got the name Ama Mutsun. Um, really, our name was just Mutsun. We were considered the Mutsun, like kind of Mutsun nation. Mm -hmm. um, we had different um, like communities within this larger area, and sometimes you'll read books and and they'll call us Ohlone or Costanoan, and there's no really there's no such tribe as Costanoan or or Ohlone. Um, we're we're actually Mutsun, mm -hmm. and within that larger category that they they call us Ohlone, um, there's actually at, at least eight different tribes within that area, within that, that wow. what they call Ohlone. So when they say Ohlone, it's not like, I'm not Ohlone from San Jose, even though they say Ohlone, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Mutsun, and the people from this area is actually, they call themselves Mwekma. So um, we're definitely, we're, we're different tribes. I'm sure thousands of years ago, we probably were all together at one point, because our stories are that we came from the north, mm -hmm. and after the Great Flood, we never went back. So, and then not just that, who knows, politics. <laughs> people separate and go their own way or whatever, but we definitely consider ourselves um, separate tribes now. How many members do you have? Um, over 600. Oh. I don't know the exact number, but definitely oh. over enrolled members. Mm -hmm. Now, moving people out there, I don't know, there's probably close to a thousand. There's, there's a lot. Now, yeah. typically, you know, for our non-native um, audience, how does a tribe, a nation, come to a point where they get to the brink where they're losing their language how does that typically happen what what happens like y you could use your tribe for example or other tribes just you mean how do we lose it or yeah. what happens when you lose it how did you lose it what how do we lose it well, what's the process of you know for your, your for our your people tribe, your um, it was just you know the coming of the Spanish at first and the you know missionization of, of our people mm -hmm. was definitely something we weren't allowed to, you know to speak it we weren't allowed to do you know a lot of things and and you were punished if, if you did so mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they would punish your children you know mm -hmm. so that's you know a good enough reason to kind of you know keep it you know quiet um, I'm, I'm just grateful that you know Ascension was able to you know to survive you know as long as she did in the 1930s and have somebody come down and, and record it or else mm -hmm. we, we would have nothing I mean we have tribal members who remember you know certain words that their grandmother used to say in the mm -hmm. morning or, or different things like that mm -hmm. but actually to have as much as we do we're, we're really you know yeah, grateful so but it's definitely you know outsiders coming in and and just you know suppression you know yeah. it happened everywhere and it's still actually happening right yeah. now in other countries so mm, that's true yeah, it's mm -hmm. happening here but unfortunately a lot of times what's happening here too is we're also involved in pushing our own culture down too sometimes you know Sometimes we try to do better for our own people, but then we're actually like hurting our own people. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know. 
Yeah, one thing about language, it's, um, <coughs> it's, it's, it's brought a lot back to our people, yeah. not just language, but other cultural traditions are starting to come back. Mm -hmm. um, I was somewhere and I was um, learning to do a particular regalia piece and someone had some, like a, some music on and I heard this word and I was like, you know, I told my friend, you know what, that sounds like Druda, you know, that uh, means thunder in our language and we actually mm -hmm. had a dance called Druda. And the gentleman said, oh yeah, you know, actually, you know, your dances were brought, you know, to this particular area and they still dance those dances when we thought these dances were gone. Yes, so other yeah. tribes borrowed those dances. So um, mm -hmm. last year, um, no, excuse me, the year before in September, we were able to bring this dance back. And it's probably close to maybe 80 years that, that our wow. people dance this dance again. So yeah, it's, it's, language is a great thing. I mean, it's if amazing. it wasn't, you know, for me knowing that, you know, what, hearing that word, we, we wouldn't have known. So it all ties mm -hmm. in together and we've sinned together. So, so it, it encompasses the dance and the culture and the dress and just about everything, mm -hmm. you know, besides the language mm -hmm. for your tribe. That's great. Yeah. Now, what are your long-term goals? Um, I would love to have like an immersion school. Well, first to become fluent, to be able to, you know, to speak mm -hmm. it, to speak to my children. But for my community is definitely to have, you know, a language immersion, you know, preschool for, for the kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, definitely that would be my dream. Sure. Yeah, nice, you definitely yeah. start with those little ones because they're just like little sponges, you know, they soak up everything and, you know, there's times where my kids were really small and they would correct me, they would catch me, you know, and <laughs> I'm just learning and they're learning it. Yeah, they're just, it's, it's great. That's yeah, what I want. You have to reverse it because that's how they, they took the language away is by the kids. They took mm -hmm. the children, yeah. they taught them a different language, you know, Spanish or English. So you have to reverse it and take, you know, do it with the kids again. Mm-hmm. They're but, definitely our, yeah. our future in, exactly. in, in every way. Mm -hmm. Now, Val Lopez is your chairman, mm -hmm. yeah. and, he, and he was on the show. He was on a few months back, and it was mm -hmm. a pleasure having him here mm -hmm. and learning about the culture. Yeah. And um, as far as your group, do you have activities throughout the year besides the school? Did you, was Big Time one of the? Or? Yeah, um, we st um, a couple of years ago we started that event when we um, learned to dance again. We brought out mm -hmm. our dance, and um, we have it every um, September Labor Day weekend. Um, we have a dance in San Juan Batista, and it's ho we're hoping you know to c to be able to continue that. So um, we build a traditional um, like brush enclosure, or sometimes people will call it an arbor, and um, we invite different California Indian tribes to come and dance. But everybody's welcome to come and to enjoy the couple of days and it's free food and it's just it's just a lot of fun. Oh, we had the pleasure of attending last year. It was very, very nice. It was <laughs> a lot of fun. And I was very impressed with the dances and the music, everything. Mm -hmm. It was oh, very, yeah. very nice. Yeah. And, like the arbor thing. That was really mm -hmm. nice. It's different from what we see all the time at the, all these yeah, different Yeah, definitely powwows. California Indian traditions is, is, is very, very different. A lot of people yeah. have you know, this, you know, perception of, of Plains Indians for yeah, everybody. Everybody, But yeah. it's just California Indian is different, and, and the music is, is really different, too, as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it, it's nice to be able to do that and to share. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Well, it's a pleasure having you here, and we'll Thank be you. attending your event this year. Great. Thank you. Just, let, yeah, just let us know. I wanted Definitely. to um, <laughs> oh. my earrings around. Because <laughs> those earrings come from Inspired Vision. Inspired Visions. We had a young lady, a young native lady, yeah. who has a business called Inspired Visions, and she designed these beautiful earrings. And uh, you can call me. Do, do, <laughs> do they have a picture on the other side? Or no, just one side? side? Oh, both sides. Am I moving? Am I going the wrong way? <laughs> 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 I want to show off these earrings because she did such a wonderful job. Oh, yeah. She's a great entrepreneur. Yeah, we should uh, always um, help uh, Native people, you know, especially in business and everything else. I think, yeah, Every absolutely, endeavor, absolutely. You know. That's why when we were talking about uh, Dr. Babe, we have to support. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> support his <laughs> um, his books, and hopefully it get published. We, we, have we, like to, <laughs> we like to thank our sponsors, the uh, Native Tanner oh, Program. You. Yes, and they're on North First Street in San Jose, and they're one of our longest sponsors of Native Voice TV, so yeah, picture nice. It. Oh, this is really important. <laughs> <laughs> the Women Empowered to Move Ahead at Center for Training and Careers. CTC's been around for 30 years. We provide uh, job training, um, youth activities. We have a, an alternative high school where, you know, if the kids have, um, if they're behind in units and, you know, they want to get their GED and 
You know, a lot of kids who've dropped out can still come back if they're, you know, 18, 17 and a half, 18 years old, come back to school, get their GED, and um, they, they would be enrolled in East Side Union High School District. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really, really important for the kids to get oh, an definitely. education. So we have that there. We have pre-apprenticeship programs. Mm -hmm. um, there's non traditional a, programs for women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And there's also um, a lot of computer classes. We have uh, a partner one-stop, so you can come register for jobs if you need a job and find mm -hmm. out what, you know, these coming to, um, to test people in the next week over there at CTC. But, yeah. but thank you for joining us <coughs> this week. And tune in next week when we have Kapoli Tonoleke yes. joining us. And they'll be doing a really exciting dance for you. And I'm sure it's something you've never seen. So tune in. Oh, yeah, definitely. Good night. Hello, I'm Pierre Abis of Union Bank. Diversity is one of our most closely held values. That's why we're proud to honor local heroes in celebration of Latino Heritage Month. Now, let's meet one of our honorees. My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of the Center for Training and Career, CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked, we work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. Now we have our own facility, and so it enables us to expand programs in response to the needs of the community. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. This moment has been made possible by Union Bank in partnership with KQED.